Nice. Okay, shall we start? Yep. Uh, oh, awesome. Uh, can you hear me well? Yes? Nice. So my name is Surin Gomez. Um, I had worked for around four years for GYM, which is the largest construction company in Peru. And I'm going to guide you through the, today through the presentation of a study we did with that company. So basically, uh, yeah, I'm sure you cannot read much here. But uh, the research or the study I'm going to present today is basically the feasibility for implementing integrated project delivery for infrastructure projects in Peru. So I'm not going to discuss today the many issues that we have been facing in construction because that's something that we have, uh, we have been hearing the last couple of days here. But anyways, uh, something that I wanted to highlight is that the investment in infrastructure projects that is projected in the next 15 years, uh, it is projected to be double. So, and I also would like to emphasize that lately there's a shifting trend from the delivery uh, of goods to the, the, to the delivery or the generation of value in construction. So, something that uh, we have seen also in Peru, and that's why our emphasis is in this specific country, not just because I'm from that country, but basically um, in Peru in the early 80s and 90s, the, the country was suffering from an economic crisis. And that economic crisis caused that the government investment was very slow and they did not do much of the construction of infrastructure that the country needed. But lately, uh, the, in the last 10 years, I would say, they have been projected an investment of around $160 million for infrastructure only because they need to, they need to cover or satisfy the current needs of the, of the population. Um, but something that we need to keep in mind is that projects have been changing from being simple, small, uh, really slow projects to being more complex and certain and quick. So uh, in order to address those changes, we really need to start doing things differently. So this is the overall methodology I developed for the research. I'm not going to go through this. I know you, are, you might be tired. And, uh, discuss a lot of information. I've, I've done this for my master thesis, so it's kind of long, but I'm going to just explain you the results that we got here. So basically, uh, what we proposed at the beginning was a conceptual framework. So what I've done is uh, I've read around 300 papers on IPDs, and I've seen what works and what doesn't work. So through a systematic literature review, we saw what were the common patterns that IPD projects were having. So either if they were using specific tools in the, in the projects or if they were being guided by, some, by certain principles. So what we collected at the end was, okay, let's have three different, three different layers that might facilitate IPD implementation. And the first one is related to the project governance structure that is gonna, be, is gonna make it easy we also have the tools that facilitate IPD implementation. And we have the principles which aim to make this transformation something sustainable because changes are very hard to be sustainable. So through implementing or through um, trying to, to do or to keep those principles uh, constantly in the projects, we are going to be able to create a culture, which is what we aim to do. So, this is just a list of the main uh, principles we found through the SLR. And we also have a list of tools that might facilitate IPD implementation throughout the life cycle of the project. Um, we also have a governance structure that kind of summarizes what are the different uh, groups, of th groups or teams that work on IPD projects. And I would like to emphasize just uh, this part in here, which is the IPD leader. So in the case of Peru, we don't have experience doing IPD projects. But what we, uh, but we, what we know is that we need people to spread the word. We need people that can share what they have done or whatever good they are doing. So what we are doing with LCI Peru is we're working on this, trying to convey individuals who can really start the different or start the change from their point of view or from their side so that the organizations are going to be changing based on the people they have. Uh, we analyzed a case study, which is uh, the first trial, I would say, that this company in particular were trying to implement uh, IPD for a rain line project. So this is the, 
the project that they were doing, which is an expansion of a rail line, and it was in the form of PPP. So we asked the participants of this project whether they know about Lean, IPD, or BIM, and it is important for you uh, to know that this particular company had 20 plus years of experience on Lean construction, so most of the people that work for this company, they kind of know about Lean, they think they apply it to, to a certain extent, but they do recognize, uh, I wouldn't say that they apply like Lean perfectly, that like 93% of them know about Lean and they, they are amazing, but at least they have care about it, they kind of apply it, uh, but however, if we see the IPD trend, we know that they admit, so they are aware that they lack of knowledge regarding this, so we know that those infrastructure projects are very unique in its kind, and most participants see those projects as complex or being like highly complex. So that's why IPD is a very good um, project delivery method to address complex projects. And we can see from the, this graph that almost 60% of participants in this particular project, they lack of knowledge regarding the IPD concept or what it involves. Therefore, training and synthesis of the body of knowledge was really important. That's, what, that's why I've done the SLR, even though it was a really long process, but it was important for us to know what, is, what it is available on IPDs or what it conveys. Something that we analyzed, so going like principle over principle, I'm gonna try to summarize this because we don't have time, but we asked something that we asked the participants was, what were they considering for choosing their key partners. We know that in IPDs, the way in which you choose their key, your key partners, it is important because you are gonna be working with them for a very long time, and you really need to establish certain trust among them. So we know that we, we saw in the case study that the industry or the case study was particularly cost-driven. However, they really started putting a lot of, putting some emphasis on things such as technical proposal on, and expertise of the other company. So, um, we also saw from the results of a, of, of a survey we developed with the, with the guys that uh, even though they were kind of considering something, considering things that are different from the cost, they were not aware of what means, what success means for their partners, which is something that is going to cause issues uh, later on because it is important in integrated projects that you know what success means for the other partners. And also, uh, it is written in the paper that we ask participants, what is important for you in integrated projects? And respect was one of the lowest rated factors that we got in the survey, which is something that really surprised uh, the team, but it's something that we're gonna need to deal with. We know, we, we have recognized that it is that's an issue, and now we need to address that. Um, also, regarding the collaborative mindset, we ask participants, okay, who is being involved in the project or setting the goals of the project. So we have that, we have seen that almost all the stakeholders are being involved in some way. But uh, we also saw that team commitment, even though all of them agree on specific goals, the team commitment to achieve those goals were not as, was not as high as we would, as we wish actually. And also, that project success metrics were not understood by all the team members. I'm not sure if you have seen projects in which you go and ask maybe the field engineer, okay, what, what do you expect or what, is, what are the success, met, success metrics of your project? And that individual doesn't know that. So it, has, it happened very often and that's something that we are gonna be, um, we need to address. We also saw that people is willing to speak up, uh, but however, they think that the communication with their supervisor is not working well. So there, we need to see what is going on there because if they can speak up, if they really think that they can speak and say whatever might be causing issues, why is that contrast or why they think that they cannot communicate properly with their supervisors? Um, some other things that we have seen is, for example, uh, there's a commitment with continuous improvement, but we saw also that no, not much practices such innovation meetings or like weekly routine meetings for developing uh, continuous improvement are being held in this project. And we also saw that participants perceive that sharing ideas is good for them. However, 
they are having issues sharing information in the project and among projects. So that's something to work on also. We saw, okay, we wanted to know, okay, when the participants are being involved, if they are being involved in the design or the, in the concept and the design of the, of the project or later on. And we saw that at least in this case study, most of the participants were involved since the design. Um, but the issue here was the collocating practices were not properly established, neither the sharing risk and reward mechanism, they, don't, they didn't have that. And therefore it was causing some issues between the people in the project. Also the collaborative decision making, even though most of the people are being involved early on, we saw that, uh, and we also saw that they consider themselves as part of the team, as important part of the team. But uh, we saw that the, the last planner, the people who really do the operation, who really do the activities, were not considered as much as they should. For example, the superintendents, um, we asked them if they were key in the decision making process and that got, we got a low rate on that, meaning that they don't think so. So um, that, that was an analysis of the case study and we wanted to expand the findings on the general industry for Peru. So we asked general questions such, okay, for Peru, we work with the LCI Peru chapter and they help us running some questionnaires and we wanted to know, to know, okay, from the principles we established at the beginning, how often are you practicing those principles or how do you think you are doing your project? So we got really high grades, so all of them are among, are uh, between one to five, and all of them think that they are doing good. So either our benchmark is really poor, and that's why we all think we are doing good, or we are being too optimistic. So we need to really dig on these results. Uh, we used the LCI individual assessment tool, and we adapted it to a Peruvian reality, and we keep the same five paths of knowledge. I'm not sure if all of you have used uh, the individual assessment, but if you haven't, I would strongly recommend you to do so. Um, in each of them, we, find, we found specific things that we need to improve. For example, in the wisdom path, we saw that participants in general in the, in the Peruvian construction community, they are struggling on making time to keep learning about Lean. So they think that they don't have the time to keep learning. That's why they are not, be, they are not improving much. And also, there is a lack of knowledge regarding all the available tools. So we know that internet gives us a lot of tools and we can find whatever we, know, whatever we need on the internet. However, they don't think or they don't know what available tools are for them to improve. And in each path, there are specific findings to talk about. Uh, similarly, we asked the participants uh, regarding the tools that they were using. So we saw that there are certain tools such as set-based design or TBD that uh, the colors are related to whether they know they have used it or they can teach. So the, the last one is, I can teach this. So I know this so well that I'm able to, like I'm a master in this and I can really share this with the community. And we saw that for these specific tools, nobody knows about that. So if they really don't know about that, we might need to hire, we might need to bring people from either US or wherever in the world that can really teach us how to do these practices or the, how to use these tools properly. Um, and regarding last planner system, we really wanted to know, okay, how are we doing with last planner system? And we found that uh, regarding this rate is regarding the usage basically. So we got just 1.5 out of, 1.7 out of five, which means that we are really doing poor using last planner system. At least we, we acknowledge that and that's something good. And it is a good start to change. So our plan of action was, used, was uh, settled in a collaborative uh, manner. We use Trello. Trello is a platform that we can uh, use in order to add our activities and to manage whatever tasks we have to do. And since I'm based in US and LCI Peru, of course, is in Peru, so I connected in monthly meetings with them through Skype and we work on things such as this. We use actually CBA and last planner to, to keep track of our activities or to take order, to make our decisions, which is something that we really wanted to know, we wanted to do, because if we are gonna 
if we want our community to do that, we really need to start doing so. And this is um, a plan of action that is divided into the, the, into the three layers that we established at the beginning. So we have the principles, tools, and the project structure, and how you should be developing each of them. I'm not going to go through each of these because I'm out of, um, I run out of time. But basically, for example, in the principles, we need to start, we need to increase the level of awareness in the industry. We really need to share the world, and we really need to make people uh, know about this tool. So what we're doing with LCI in an effort to improve this is basically we started uh, our Lean Leader Certificate Program. So it is a 48 hours program in which we are trying to make people or to teach people things such as starting with Lean Leadership, Lab Planner, Tag Time. So we already talked to uh, Professor Glenn and Iris, which are my advisors in UC Berkeley, and they are going to be um, giving some workshops, online workshops, so that people can really hear from the masters on those topics. And uh, those are my conclusions. Basically, um, the com complexity of these projects, because integrated projects are, ha are really highly, highly complex, uh, it can really be a catalyst for moving to a collaborative approach instead of just um, making people being afraid of that, those projects. We need to work on time management, uh, create a le learning environment, and keep this uh, the, because the maturity of IPD or how IPD is being developed in the country is going to be uh, strongly connected to the con to the spread or how we share the world itself. Uh, the successful IPD implementation need com need commitment from the members and sharing knowledge, and we really need to start working on basics, improving reliability and trust among us. The use of activities such as retrospective need to be reinforced. We also know that. Uh, team members should take time for, to learn from each other. That's something that we found also through the analysis. They are not having the time to co create those connections. And we know that in IPD projects, people really know about, know their partners and know the partners from other companies. Also, the knowledge uh, on tools such as last planner systems, as we saw, people are really not using it, maybe because they don't know how to use it, or they think that last planner system means look ahead and it doesn't, so they can use last planner system from daily planning to planning of the of phases of the project. So they really need to know those tools in order to use them. And um, start these lean leaders or champions to guide others, so we need to facilitate that. And also the principles and tools, it is important to remember that those can be applied without pre prior regulative, regulative structures or legal things. I've heard a lot that IPD is a contract. To me, it is not. It is actually the way we are going to execute a project. And even though the contract structure supports or can help or can guide you to achieve what you want, you can start actually, um, you can start this change with, the, with practices, with your behavior, but from the point where you are uh, now. And um, that's it. <laughs>